The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the New Media Factory. Some programs on this network might include strong images and language and may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Yo, yo, yo! Welcome to Fever Pitch. Here we are on a Friday night. Uh, as you can tell, it's not Wednesday, it's Friday. Um, special night here, Friday night. Not because of the guy on my right. Um, so, as you guys can tell right from the bat, we are missing Rick uh, Oliveris here. Um, unfortunately, Rick will no longer be with us in Fever Pitch. I know, sad. Rick, if you're watching, hope everything's going well. Hope uh, your schedule of conflicts are better. Um, and Rick, you will you will be missed. We'll miss you here. And I gotta find ugly guys like this guy on my right to accompany me. Uh, on my right here tonight, we have Jason DeJong. Hi, Jason. Hey, Jonah. How are you doing? <laughs> doing good. How how you been? Uh, well, uh, obviously uh, not that good because we lost the championship against you guys. So, uh, but um, yeah, just uh, personal life pretty good, but just. Football wise, not so good. As you guys know, Jason said he's not doing so well because he lost. They, you didn't lose a championship. They, Kaya took your hopes away from winning a championship last last yeah, week. That's I, that's where we lost. I, I play I play for for Kaya, and yeah, I just kidding. It's a little, little friendly, a little friendly joke there. Um, so tonight, as you can tell, we will be talking a lot about Jason. A lot about uh, global, the UFL just ending, and also a lot has been going on this week in football in general um, with the Confederations Cup. Um, so we'll be talking a lot about that as well. But let's get let's get to our topic of the night, which is uh, Jason. Let's, let's start grilling you over here. Yeah, Jason, where where are you from? Uh, I'm from uh, Breda, Holland, and uh, yeah, grew up there, played football there. And uh, been playing for uh, six years now with uh, Ascals, and uh, play here in UFL since. Uh, you, grew, you grew up in, in Holland your whole life. Yeah, yeah. Grew up well, there. Who, where did you? Uh, who did you grow up playing for in Holland? Um, well, I was six years old. My dad brought me to this local team. It's called Floria UC. And then when I was uh, like ten years old, I got scouted for uh, NAC Breda. Uh, it's a professional team in Holland. And then, um, yeah, uh, I went up uh, all the way up to the reserves, and then uh, kind of went around a bit. I went to Belgium. I played in Indonesia, played in the second division of Holland again uh, before moving here. Guys, if you guys have any questions that you would like to ask Jason or add questions to me to ask for Jason, uh, you can go to live.nmfnetwork.tv and you can join the chat. There you can. Uh, if you got crush on this guy, if you think he's cute, you can ask him whatever questions you want in that <laughs> chat. Um, so after growing up in, in Holland, did, uh, did you, you were just playing professional there before you came to the Philippines? Yeah, um, I signed my first contract uh, as a 16 year old uh, in Holland. Uh, that uh, I, I chose to, I, yeah, to not go to a college, play professional right away. and. Um, uh, what I kind of still think about sometimes, you know, why didn't I just go to school like my brother did, you know, because maybe I wouldn't be here now. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, well, after that, um, yeah, I just went around a bit, played professional football in Belgium, played professional football in Holland again, then Indonesia, and uh, now I'm here. Playing I'm in the Philippines playing for Global. How old are you now? Uh, 23 years old. 23 years old. It's still a young buck. It's got yeah. So I got two years of wisdom on you. You do, man. Yeah, I'm. I'm getting old now. I'm 25. I'm getting about to hit that. That 30 soon is gonna creep on. No, me. 30, no, no, 30. Man. It will take a while. Don't worry about that. So, um, you said you've been with the Ascals now for for six years. How, yeah. How's your experience been with the Ascals? Well, it's like uh, really. Uh, it's been a bumpy ride, to be honest. Like the first time I came out, uh, of course, it's nothing anything uh, like how it's now mm -hmm. uh, like uh, the football wasn't big at all well it isn't that big now but still bigger than it was like five six yeah it's exactly grown. six years ago and um, 
But yeah, it's like as fun. I have uh, like yeah, 38 caps for the senior team. I went all over Asia, actually all over the world, because we went to states too for training camps and. Yeah, it's been uh, fun so far, good experience. I mean, there's not a lot of people in the world that can say that you play for a national team and that you sure. travel for your country, so. That's very true. How, cool. um, how did you end up hearing about, about the Ascos? Well, the thing was that uh, I was in uh, Holland and uh, I, I played for, um, for the youth teams of Holland before, like uh, region teams and, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, but then we were like, yeah, my my mom should be, wouldn't they have like a, a Filipino team? So I just looked it up on the internet, and um, then I came on this website uh, Pinoy Soccer, and um, I just sent them email to them. And I got respond back, and um, uh, after a month, I had a Filipino passport, and I was on my way to Thailand with my dad to have a training camp with the national team, and. Um, yeah, that's where I got my first five international caps. That's what's up. Uh, so your mom is Filipina? Yes. She is, she, yeah. What province is she from? Uh, she's from Tarlac. Tarlac, where's that? I mean, it's up north. Up north, you've been yeah. there before? <coughs> yeah, I've been there. It's been two years now that I went back because it's, um, it's kind of a hassle to go there. It's far to drive and, uh, you know, it's, it's not like anything like here in Manila. And uh, for me, it's also a little bit out of my... Um, comfort zone because uh, you know I kind of feel I feel bad you know for these uh, for my family sometimes you know what I mean I want to help them and uh, you know it just affects me emotionally so that's cool so, oh, you should, you, you should, do you try to help him though? You, yeah of course you know I still I still do that you know I still yeah. try to support him like even with uh, with my um, cousins and stuff for school and food and everything but, but your, your mom's not here right now she's, no my mom's in Holland, in Holland. Yeah. your dad was just visiting though yeah my dad's here now your dad's here how long is he but for? he's um, for he's been here now for a week and he's gonna stay another week but he's up north in uh, Ilocos Norte he's there for um, vacation just going around the Philippines um, for a lot of you who don't know, Jason has this this uh, rep around as uh, the little ba bad boy. I think he's, he's a soft. He looks like a soft little <laughs> puppy. He has a little cute smile. He looks like a little puppy to me, a little chihuahua. But uh, so he's got this this, this bad boy rep. Um, you want you want to tell us about it? Why, why do you think you you've got this uh, rep all of a sudden? Oh, that's not all of a sudden. It's been it's been years now, huh? Yeah. Why why would you say uh, you got this bad boy rep? Well, you know. I kind of do the dirty work, you know, for for my teammates. Mm -hmm. I try to help them out. I re I really want to be the best team player as I can be, and um, yeah, I do. Like I said, I put on I put in a lot of tackles. I used to get booked a lot. Uh, talking about that. Yeah, you see, you booked a lot. He just got a red card against Kaya. You want to you want to tell him why? Yeah, of course. You know, I mean, um, uh, I said the effort twice. You can, you can say the effort on the show. Probably. Yeah, I said uh, fucking hell, and I got a yellow card, and then I said fucking hell again, and I got a second yellow card. So, hey, so what minute um, was that? It was I, I, I think we were like 15 minutes into the second yeah. half, and then uh, I got the red card in eight minutes time. So I said fucking hell once, and then eight minutes after that I said it again. Yeah, another red and card. Then I got another red card. How many times? How many times you get booked with a red this this season? Twice. Twice. Twice more than me. Yeah, not yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, uh, not proud of it, but um, I don't want to make any excuses. But I mean, the refereeing has a lot to do with it here. So yeah, we've we've talked about uh, we we've had that discussion a few times on the show about the the referees. Yeah, it's an absolute but disgrace. Maybe they just don't like your bad boy rep, bro. Maybe they don't like your tattoos and your snapbacks. Yeah, but it has nothing to do with rules. <laughs> So, yeah. any other reason? So you would say it's because you got booked a lot when you when you first came. Yeah, um, like uh, it was just like tackling hard sometimes, a little bit over aggressive, and uh, I have that uh, still sometimes. But um, yeah, uh, I think that's why you know, and of course also the look because people think that I am um, a snob, a cocky person. You know what I mean? But the people that know me, they would. Uh, they think you're just a little chihuahua. Exactly, like you. <laughs> so, yeah, that's right. Really, so when you when you came to the Philippines, before you came to the Philippines, you weren't all, all tatted up. No, I didn't. No, well, I, you got you got all your tats here in the Philippines. No, not all of them. Um, yeah, basically, I can show you. Um, like 
these old school ones I got in Belgium, mm -hmm. the, the Jesus and the Maria. And then um, the JDJ, the one that I have here. <laughs> that was the first one. If you want to zoom in. That was the first one. But uh, like after that, yeah, uh, we had success in 2010. And then uh, Joel, a friend of uh, Anton, uh, he hooked me up with, um, with a free sleeve. So we filled my whole arm up for free. You just recently got one on your on your chest, chest right? Yeah, What's exactly. the one on your chest? I have a, one on my chest. It's um, the Filipino sun and uh, stars. It's just uh, proud to be Filipino. So you love your uh, you love the Philippines? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, of that's course. Good. You know, I mean, for your um, country. I have a lot of complaints, you know, but that's my Dutch side because <laughs> in Holland we complain a lot. <laughs> but I really do love the Philippines. So. We wanna. The ladies of the studio would like to zoom in on your on your tattoo. So let's let's let them zoom in here a little bit. Show them a little bit more of that the ink you've gotten done. If you can zoom, show them those guns. Whoa! Now here a Filipino map. So in case you guys want to find this guy, cut his my brother's his left arm here. off. Then an archangel here. Uh, and then, of course, the the Maria and the angels. So I actually, uh, yeah, a nice, nice little sleeve with a, uh, because I'm Catholic and um, you know I really do believe, and uh, this keeps me strong. So. What about, what about who, who kissed you on the neck? That's uh, Misak. Misak kissed yeah, you on the neck. Yeah, Misak. Lipstick on. Everyone what are you guys asked. doing that global bus. A lot. Yeah, that's so <laughs> team bonding. <laughs> team bonding. So yeah, tell, yeah. tell us about the Misa kiss on your neck. Well, you know, I was uh, kind of like, I saw, to be honest, you know, I'm not someone that you know, like if somebody jumps off the bridge, I'll jump off the bridge too. But yeah. I saw it a couple of times, like the kiss mark in the neck, and I was like, it's pretty cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like everyone, oh everyone has a tattoo. Because people always say like, yeah, you can uh, if you have a tattoo, it has no reason that it's, it's dumb. Like a tribal, for yeah, example, yeah. Or something like this. But um, I don't know. It's kind of. I thought it was really cool, you know. Because even it's realistic, you know. The guy today, I, w I went to my dad's hotel, and um, the guy said, "Hey, hey, you, you have a little something here." I was like, "Well, that's uh, permanent, man." I hope you didn't tell me you know what I mean? Yeah, that's what yeah. you didn't tell me. No, no, I tell everyone it's me suck, you yeah. know. Because I can't. I told the guys today at Frigo that. Yeah. It was Misa. I can't tell you yeah. here that someone else. Spe speaking of Misa, so obviously when you first came here, you were playing for Stallions. Yeah. Stallions, um, it's like a family team to you, right? That, yeah. Um, Still. How is it? How is it like your family? Well, the first time I came out for the for the Ascals, um, Ernie uh, took me in, like, uh, like all the way up to uh, I stopped playing for Stallions. He really took care of me. As I was zone, and uh, I still really respect that, and really, really appreciate uh, the whole family what they did for me. You know, because every time I came to the Philippines, they fed they me. Care of yeah, you. they took care of me and everything, and that's um, that's why I chose to play for Stallions, and uh, with success, of course, because we won the the cup. Right. And um, yeah, afterwards, it was just a better career move. To go to global, and that's we, why I chose for global. We had uh, we had Stallings, Jeremy, um, Matthias, all those guys on our last episode. Um, so you you left Stallings, you were you were loaned, yeah, from Stallings to to global. Your first game with global was against Stallings, wasn't it? No, my first game was, was against Morocco. Morocco with global. That was your first game. Yeah, for because we, when they played Stallings, we were in um, Century Park for the Challenge Cup. We couldn't play. Oh, okay. Remember we played with a handicap team. Yes, okay. So um So yeah, so how how does that feel though to know the Stallions win the championship? You know, those are all your, your boys that you first came in with. You went to Global, you guys are neck and neck, but Stallions won it. You know, do you feel any anything towards that, you know? Are you well, just, yeah, just happy for course. the club or I'm of course I'm happy for the club, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like uh I don't wanna um, uh, take that away from that, like, or overshadow that with hate and stuff, you know mm, what I mean? Yeah. Because I'm happy for those boys that I wanted, but it doesn't take away that I really wanted yeah, to yeah, win the league, sure. you know what I mean? Because it would it would have been really special because I would have been back-to-back -back champions with two different clubs, and I don't think, well, that 
somebody did that before, you know what I mean? So, um, unfortunately, uh, yeah, we became runners up. But um, no, but n no hate feelings, nothing at all. I'm really happy for the club as well. If you can see what uh, what they've been through, like they promoted to the first division, yeah. they won the cup, then now they won the championship. It's uh, it's a little fairy tale, to be honest. Yeah. So, uh, Jeremy Hahn, if you're watching, uh, you still owe me two stakes. Because thanks to Kaya being global, you, they were crown champions. Um, now, you guys with global, you also just came out of the Singapore Cup. You're still in the Singapore Cup, yes. right? Um, what was the, the cup you just played in that you guys got eliminated in? The President's Cup. The President's Cup. Yeah. What happened in the President's Cup? What, what happened to global in the President's Cup? Well, uh, I heard you guys got some striker goalkeeper. Yeah, this I heard just, he was uh, amazing. I, I heard he was amazing. People, goalkeeper. this is the funny thing. People were still trying to defend this person, but um, so tell, really us, tell us about what happened. What happened there? So all, all, all we all just hear things. You were actually there, you know. So what happened with the striker goalkeeper? All right, let, let just let me start. You know that we we started the presence cup really well with the with, you know you guys the big two 0 no, right first no, game no, more five zero five zero first game and then. Uh, so we started off well, mm -hmm. and then the second game we played against the team uh, from Pakistan. We, yeah, we just gave it away. Like same thing in the league, like uh, personal mistakes. You know what I mean? You can't train on that. You can train as hard as you want, but if people mess up, then yeah. And um, yeah, that's kind of like in the the sec the third game. It's just. Uh, uh, we started off well. We we got the first goal, and then afterwards it was like a, like a card house. You know what I mean? Just everything just fell, and then uh, yeah, we were losing obviously. And this goalkeeper um, gets the ball outside his box. Where did you guys Where did you guys find this goalkeeper? Uh, you know, um, I'm not saying names, but some agent. Yeah. Okay. Brought him in. Brought him in. All right. So t t explain what happened. I got I got to before I laugh. I gotta, I gotta hear this. So. Uh, yeah, we had uh, Sacapano on loan from uh, Army, which is a really good goalie. Exactly. Uh, well, obviously some people were not happy with performance. I think so. That's why they looked outside uh, for another goalkeeper. What is funny because you only have two um, places spots for foreign players, right? Mm -hmm. So you could have. Took some, like a defender or um, well yeah that's not up to me and yeah so we looked for another goalkeeper and this guy came in and um, the first game he played really well you know what I mean so it was like we were like oh phew, thank God you know what I mean yeah. he uh, he's yeah. uh, he can at least like save balls yeah yeah and then um, the last uh, the last game he gets the ball um, outside the box and. Um, he dribbles one guy, so it's like, oh, well, that's that's good, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and he dribbles another one, and another one, and literally another one, and he's like on the same height as me and Carly on midfield. So he passes the ball to Carly, so you think like, okay, now he's gonna run back. He runs forward. Oh my god. He runs forward, and he's really screaming for, he wants to play a one-two with Carly. <laughs> so the ball, uh, Carly like uh, because I think Joshua was going deep also and then he almost got the ball back no in, on the box of their of the, the opponent you know what I mean scramble on the box top of the box and then uh, yeah, after that he he ran back but uh, yeah the gaffer was obviously not having this so uh, Eddie came in right away yeah, they were like yeah you know uh, we have to get this clown off the field you know what I mean then so, he stayed though after a while. He yeah, so he sh and then the funny thing was like we started training again and this guy he tr so he showed up for training we were like okay yeah well he's and then he, he he played as a player no way yeah is he a good player maybe he was uh, never a goalkeeper i don't know man somebody got you guys you guys got, you know when people say only in the philippines this yeah. was the moment man <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> you guys got got someone this, got you guys this was the moment man so now you're 23, the U23s yeah. have started training. Uh, how, how does it feel being with that squad? Yeah, with, uh, that group of uh, those group of guys. Well, it's probably a, a big difference between being with uh, the senior team, right? Yeah, of course. You know, I mean, um, 
you still have to, you, there is a lot of young boys. Yeah, well, I'm a young boy myself, but I'm uh, one of the older ones in the, the under 23s, of course. And um, the thing is that I, I still have this uh, tournament that happened two years ago in the back of my head. That we had a really good squad, really good team. We had Roland Miller, we had Carly de Morga, we had Jeffrey Christians, OJ, uh, Manny Ott, like all names, you know. Yeah, so but we never good really players, team. but we have we didn't have a team. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we really had bad results in Indonesia. And I kind of have this revenge feeling, or I really want to do well now. Um, you know, to just. Um, watch this uh, results from two years ago away because this is also my last uh, SEA Games so I really want to do well and um, as well for the I, I tell you honestly the last game that we, that we when we played against the Brunei I really uh, I was really sad and uh, it's, you know it's a shame you know a shame for your country you know what I mean you, you yeah. lose these games and um, but um, nice yeah we have to um, get good results in the, this new uh, SEA Games Right, right. All right, man. Well, I'm done talking to you. Uh, you got anything you want to say to people? I'm, I'm sick of hearing you talk now. <laughs> you got anything you want to say to people? Any special shout outs? Yeah, um, I want to have a um, shout out to my boys back home, to uh, my brother, of course, Danilo de Jong. I really miss you, brother. And um, brother. To, my, <laughs> to, my two, uh, to my other two brothers, uh, Mitchell and um, Stefan Molendijk. Uh, I really miss you guys, and I hope you guys come over to the Philippines soon. And uh, yeah, stay tight over there. Bad boy to John throwing up the deuces. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well let's uh let's go to a little commercial break. When we get back, we'll uh, talk about football that's going on around the world. Since since we're done talking about Kaya being global and global <laughs> losing, guy. global losing the championship and Stallions winning it, we're done we're done with that subject. So we'll be right back after this commercial break. I don't know if you guys are familiar with a with a game Chubby Bunny. But um, let's say, have you played Chubby Bunny before? No. You put a marshmallow in your mouth. You say Chubby Bunny. And you keep putting it in your mouth. And you okay. keep saying Chubby Bunny. Okay. Whoever can get the most in their mouth wins. But we're not gonna say Chubby Bunny. We're gonna say we're gonna have a conversation. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So I'm gonna ask you, okay, gonna ba? Okay. And you're gonna be like, okay, na okay, na. Okay. 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 Yeah. Go. Two at a time. Okay, gonna ba? Okay, no, okay, no. <laughs> I just saw it. Okay, no, okay, no. Okay, no, okay, no. Okay, no, okay, no. Yo, we're back after watching those. Uh, what is that show? Date night. Date night. Date night. You like those girls? Lovely girls there. No comment, man. No comments, guys. Did you have a girlfriend? Yeah, yeah, man. I'm he's, tied down. He's taken. He's tied down. So no comment. We'll talk about it after the show. We're <laughs> off air. Um, so let's talk about some some things going around, uh, going on, going on with football around the world. Um, you hear about the guy, the teams have qualified for the World Cup? Yeah. Uh, about it. Australia, Iran, uh, Iran, and South Korea this past week on uh, Tuesday, Tuesday night, Australia qualified for the World Cup. Um, they were they beat Iraq 1-0. Uh, got 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 some notes here. We're trying to make a real Fox Fox Soccer Fox Soccer edition here. Um, they won 1-0 against Iraq, um, which made them they got second place in Group B right after uh, right behind Japan. Now, uh, Iran beat South Korea 1-0, which uh, puts them into the World Cup. And South Korea, they only, only go into the World Cup, even though they lost, on uh, goal differential. So now South Korea, Iran, and Australia this past week in Asia are all uh, qualified for the World Cup. Um, you been watching any of the Confederations uh, Cup action? No, not anything. Dude, it's honest, so man. it's so tough to because you got you got to wake up like you know two thirty a.m. and watch, watch these games, but it's always it's always good stuff. Um, yesterday, Uruguay played uh, Nigeria. Uruguay won two two to one. Um, 
a goal from Diego Logano and Diego, uh, Diego Forlan. Um, Diego Forlan had the, the game winner. Um, so we'll show you some highlights from this game. This was just this was just yesterday. Or I would say like uh, early morning today for us guys. So let's go to the Uruguay Nigeria highlights. Yeah. Al saque de esquina, Uruguay por el costado derecho. This is the first goal. Le va a pegar con la derecha, pierna cambiada. Diego Forlan al primer palo aparecía por allí Godín. Tocó la defensa de Nigeria, el rebote que le cae. Qué bueno, qué bueno. El disparo de Lugano y el gol. Sketch. You talk, you can hear us, right? Guys can hear us, right? Uh, they're going to tell me. This is the defender, look at that first one. Yeah, that's what happened there. Who plays for Chelsea? El gol de Nigeria lo marca Obi Mikel. Nigeria's goal. They love a fight. No doubt. Además del disparo con la izquierda hay que quedarse con el movimiento, con la maniobra para acomodarse el balón a la izquierda y después pegarla como le pegó. Juega al compás. Este señor Nigeria cuando pisa territorio que no lo hace habitualmente de peligro, de riesgo ahí. Sabe resolver qué bien. Como it's so hard to play against these people. A, a Why is it that? And they're so, so like clumsy. You know what I mean? It just hurt you, man. Pues ha marcado Obi Mikel su cuarto gol con la selección de Nigeria. Diego Forlán. Here's the game winner. He's like 51st minute. Le pone velocidad al ataque de Uruguay. Se apoya en Cavani. Está solo Forlán. Puede venir el peligro. La está pidiendo. What's up? That's a finish. That's a great finish. It's like OJ's finish. That's who was this? Oh, yes, this is a lefty. Oof. What a strike. What a great finish. Um, in other, other games yesterday, um, Brazil beat Mexico 2-0. Two, two Go from Neymar and Joe. Um, we got highlights from this game as well, so let's let's check that out. Here's Neymar. That's. that's not the oh, here's some just all highlights for sure. The goals. Well, the first goal came at the ninth minute from Neymar. Bam. Comes down. It takes a while to come down. Boom. Absolutely brilliant technique. That is fantastic. It's so easy just to blast this one over the bar. Look at that. Well, it's a shin pad though. A little bit shimp right here. The cheers for the goal gave way to gasps when the replay was shown on the big screen. Yeah. You're ready. You can't, this is it, you can't you can put these boys under pressure, it's, it's just getting the ball. It's crazy how the little club's about to be there. This guy's gonna be like, you know, everyone's gonna be watching this guy. Everyone's gonna be watching Neymar in the World Cup. These are some good highlights. I mean, this game is. Yeah, he did. Oh, Do you like the fact that he went to uh, to Barcelona? Yeah, Neymar? Yeah, don't you think he's uh, more of a Real Madrid player? We were just talking about that on uh, um, our last show. So that? I think I think he's gonna be great at Barcelona. Do you think he'll get in trouble, like you know, overshadowing Messi? I think it's a shot. Yeah. I thought you would be fed. He would, he would be. I think fed those players are gonna make him a better, great player. You know, he would be fed like uh, right wing for Real uh, and left Ronaldo. So the second goal in this game comes in um, stoppage time. It's cool to the end. You see this Pana, by the way, from uh, Neymar. In this game. Nice. Referee, oh. you just can't coach this, can you? Oh my God, that guy is getting raped. Here, here, just look. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, change right to left. Hana, my friend. Ah, oh, so the look, look, look. Look at this Hana. Fresh for the second. Probably real times a little bit better. <laughs> 
Oof. My God, go home. Dirty. <laughs> Too dirty. All right, so that's hot. But dude, my game of the week for this the cup was definitely the Italy. Oh, sorry, another new uh, Spain. We're not gonna show highlights, but Spain beat Tahiti 10, 10 0 this morning. Um, uh, it's crazy because with Guam we play against Tahiti and Oceanas. Uh, we we didn't play this past uh, Oceana, but uh, I feel for those guys. You know, dude, we played Australia. We lost nine 0 but just uh, I'm sure it's a great experience. Um, over in the car ride over here, you were showing me that picture of the Tahiti goalkeeper. Yeah. Got on his knees and he bowed down to the Spain players. Um, you know, it's a great experience for those guys. Uh, you know, props to them for going out there and giving it, giving it their all. Um, but my game of the week, what I want to show you the highlights for, is uh, the Italy and Japan game. Heard about that game? No. Dude, Italy went down early, like the first 33 minutes. They were down 2-0. Um, and uh, they were able to to make it get a comeback, you know, a comeback in uh, they won 4-3. So here's here's our highlights from this game. This is my my game of this week so so far. Or yeah, it's Friday. Actually, it's Friday night. So it's my game of the week. Check it out. Mubarak Montez, Mufira, Al Sheikha, Al Bidaya, Bil Bil كانت انطلاقه اليابان على مستوى التسجيل توما كاغاوا كان من تحقيق الهدف الثاني لفائده اليابان هدفين لصفر يعود المنتخب so الايطالي في نهايه الشوط عن طريق ديروس يكون نتيجه هدفين مقابل هدف ثم المنتخب الايطالي مره اخرى كان محظوظ لانه شيدا سجل هدف ضد مرماه وتمكنت السكوادرا زورا من تعديل النتيجه في في الشوط. What do you think of that guy? I just love this guy. Balotelli. هدفين مقابل هدف. He does whatever he wants, man. He doesn't care. إيطاليا تتحصل على ضربة جزاء بعد حصول الهدف. That's what I like, you know. He doesn't, you know, he just says. مع الكابتن جمال السيري. ضربة جزاء ممكن تكون فاشلة. المنتخب الياباني بالوتيل يحقق اهداف مقابل هدفين اوكازاكي يعود ويعود اليابان من احسن المباريات في هذا الموسم ككل يتمكن من تحقيق الهدف الرابع اربع اهداف مقابل ثلاثه لفائده ايطاليا امام اوه فيس سو ذات واز ذات واز ماي ا جيم اوف ذا اوف ذا ويك ام ناو نيجيريا بلايز سبين تومورو رايت نيجيريا بلايز سبين از ذات كوريكت جايز يور ذا هوست مان نيجيريا بلايز سبين يوروغواي بلايز تاهيتي um, on Saturday in the States, it would be Sunday morning for us, guys. So uh, watch out for those games. Um, yeah, I had a lot more topics to talk about, but we we're so busy listening to this guy and his tattoos that we're running out of time. Um, I'm not even going to touch this guy's neck and ask him if he's got a fever, though, because he's got this little kissy tattoo. I don't want him to start telling people that it, that it was Jonah, not Misa. Exactly. Kissing you on the neck. Uh, but, guys, so thank you guys for tuning in. We didn't, we didn't have any questions in the chat. Nothing in the chat today? No. Oh, nothing no. in the chat. He used to be a stallion too. When the stallions came, we had people in the chat. Yeah, well, you know, it's okay, man. <laughs> what? I have one question for you, my dude. What's my question? What if you could choose one moment in your football career? You know, it doesn't matter if it's with national team of the America or anything or uh -huh. El Salvador, wherever you're from. What would your like moment be? Like Champions League goal or what? What would it be, my man? My moment. In My moment career. in football would be, actually, the moment that I knew I wanted to keep playing football was when I, I got my scholarship to go to college. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, that's, that's, be that's when I, because I, I played multiple, I played three sports okay. in high school, you know? So when I knew that football was going to take me further, that was like, that's been like my moment so far. That's the reason no, I'm I mean, doing what I'm doing now. you can choose. I mean... A Champions League final goal or a World Cup final, like that. Oh, like you yeah. know what I mean? Like you can choose a moment that will happen. What would you choose? Oh, for sure, score, scoring a goal in the World Cup. Yeah, you know, for sure, that would definitely like, that would be my my for sure the moment like, I could hang up the boots after that scoring a goal in the World Cup. Same here with me, man. Shit, making it to the World but Cup. But for me, it's it has to be a special one. 
What the hell are you doing asking me questions? I'm supposed to be asking you questions. What the hell well, I just have one question. Get this guy off my show. We're going to get out of here, guys. <laughs> guys, thank you guys for tuning in to Fever Pitch tonight. We got Jason DeJong, uh, the bad boy, a little soft chihuahua when you really know him, if you know him well like I do. Um, <laughs> Well, guys, we'll see you next week, Wednesday or Friday. Who knows? Tune in to my tweets and let me know what you guys want to see. Thank you guys for uh, tuning in. Love ya. Peace.